Hi everyone, my name is Simone Guerrieri and I'm a neurologist and PhD student at Sarafele Hospital in Milan, Italy. Um, first of all, I would like to thank the European Sherco Foundation Committee for the possibility to present here some of the results of our research. The topic of this short presentation will be the possible role of visually both potentials and in particular OCT, optical coherence tomography, as biomarker to monitor progressive multiple sclerosis, which is receiving increasing attention in the last years, especially because of its still unmet therapeutic needs. Nowadays, in fact, it is still very limited, unfortunately, our capability to detect and consequently counteract the neurodegeneration, which is predominant during the progressive phase of the disease as the main driver of irreversible disability for our patient. And emerging evidence suggests the visual pathway may play a role in this game, being one of the most reliable models to study CNS damage in vivo and in a non-invasive way, uh, in particular in MS, uh, both from a functional and a morphological uh, point of view through different techniques, including VPs and OCT. Uh, with the present study, we wanted to combine this kind of approach to progressive MS in order to explore um, the relation between demyelination and neurodegeneration in this phase of the disease, trying at the same time to underline possible differences uh, between various subsets of progressive patients, starting from the classical clinical distinction between primary and secondary progressive MS. And with this purpose, we enrolled 350 progressive patients who underwent a baseline assessment with visual acuity, OCT, and VPs. In 147 cases, a reassessment was also obtained after a mean follow-up of two years with a parallel collection of clinical records. Uh, in this table are summarized the clinical and demographic features of, of our final study population. As you can see, among 350 patients enrolled, 228 were affected by secondary progressive MS, while 122 had a primary progressive course with some differences between the two cohorts, particularly in terms of uh, previous optic neuritis incidents significantly higher as expected in the secondary progressive group, reason why statistical analysis have been performed on the whole data set and then repeated after excluding contributions deriving from eyes with previous optic neuritis, and these latter results are shown here in this presentation. Mm, considering the first part of our study with the one with a cross-sectional design, we focus on the comparison, that, as we said, between primary and secondary progressive MS, and we found secondary progressive patient, as you can see in the upper table, to show uh, significantly higher VP latency values in comparison to primary progressive patient. That was particularly true for uh, the multifocal technique, still in the presence of a trend when considering traditional fulfilled VPs. And as you can see below, in a similar way, when using OCT, we found secondary progressive patient to show uh, reduced RNFL and GCIPL thickness values in comparison to primary progressive patient. Uh, in the presence in both cohorts of a significant correlation between uh, VP latency uh, increase on the one end, which is an indicator of demyelination, and RNFL and GCIPL thickness reduction on the other, which are indicator of neuroaxonal loss, uh, as you can see in, in these scatter plots reported here. Uh, moving to the second part of our study, the one with a longitudinal design, we did not point out significant differences between primary and secondary progressive patients, but when reclassifying our cohort according to EDSS status, we found uh, patients with an increase of their disability over time to show prominent uh, RNFL thinning during follow-up, uh, independently from uh, the presence of MRI activity in comparison to patients with a stable EDSS over time. And that was found to be true for RNFL, but also for GCIPL thickness evolution over time, as you can see in this other box plot, thus prompting the use of OCT as a biomarker uh, in the context of clinical trials aimed to test neuroprotection in progressive MS. Uh, concluding, I would like to thank all the members of the Neurology and Neurophysiology Unit at Sarafele Hospital who made this work possible. Thank you very much for your kind attention.